Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, December 29th, 2023, last trading day in December. Morning, Deox. Uh, all the indices are have dipped into the red just a little bit. So will we finish 2023 with a push up or push down? Tesla up uh, two thirds of a percent. Baidu up uh, a little under one percent. Kind of the two strongest stocks right now. Everything else is pretty much below that or slightly in the red. Uber is Uber's down one and a third percent. So we'll try to just get a couple trades in here and probably be done pretty quick today with it being Friday and the last trading day of the year. Uh, just a reminder that markets are closed Monday. So I'll just be really glad to get through <clears throat> into the new year and get a little bit, bit of normalcy back. Uh, you know, sometimes in the, over the Christmas break and then, you, you, there's light trading, volumes low, and then you after Christmas you got New Year's, and um, so just be glad to get back on the regular schedule where we don't have market closed. I was going to ring here in about 15 seconds. I will probably be just, again, just a little conservative on my entries today, just like I have been the last few days. Morning, Bumblebee. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll take a look at it, see what premiums look like. After maybe the first... Uh, 10 minutes or so, kind of see as uh, what they look like. <laughs> Bell has run, rung a lot of stocks in the red, handful in the green. Te tech stocks look, look like they are the strongest. <laughs> S&P flat, NASDAQ up 10 points, Dow down 10 points. Let's see what the SPX zero DTE looks like. Yeah, I mean, I might enter a uh, probably enter a morning iron condor here. I don't usually, I kind of like to enter them about 15 minutes after the bell is rung because sometimes you get a, a push up one way or the other and it throws it off center right out of the gates. I know a lot of the zero DTE traders, they back test, you know, what time to get in and all that. I've been so successful since I started paper trading and then moving even to real money that I haven't dipped my toe in the back testing yet. But I can tell you that and it's probably just I continue to be successful. So I just haven't changed anything. But uh, I've just noticed whenever I do my trade the, the iron condor, if I give it. 10, 15 minutes it usually um, does a little better because 
doesn't push out of center, right? Like, you know, sometimes it does out of the gates, but there is no scientific evidence that I have to support that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on my, it's kind of on my goal. It's one, one of my, on my to-do maybe, uh, I should say, in uh, 2024 is to start doing it more. Got some stocks pushing up, some pushing down. Tesla had a rough day yesterday. I pretty much just bled lower the entire day. Get our second bar here now. Yeah, see, it looks like the volume's pretty weak here with some of these stocks. Don't have too high of hopes to catch a volume runner out of the gates. Disney pushing up, Target pushing up.
Not seeing any volume. Couple minutes left here. It's actually getting some volume, but it's in the opposite direction. Less than a minute to go, not really seeing anything I like wild about. <clears throat> Posted my morning iron condor in the zero DTE live chat channel. Uh, after we get off, I'll obviously publish my December results like I always do um, every month. And I will also post my year results for the Mighty 90 Volume Runner and Continuation Runner. <clears throat> so excited for that. Just uh, took a, kind of took a brief look at it this morning and... Um, That mighty 90 this year for me was extremely um, strong, I guess. I haven't figured up December's yet, but January through November, I had 126 winners, 45 losers. I think that's over 70% win percentage on the mighty 90s. And so... Really happy about that. Just seeing the high win percentage on those mighty nineties that really, really all year were were awesome. All right. Speaking of mighty nineties, let's see if we can find one here. Definitely not going to force anything today with it being probably a light trading day. I also, um, unless if something disastrous happens today, I've guaranteed that I was in the green every single month of 2023 for these three strategies that I trade here. Did not have one red month. My, my uh, lowest was about... $2,034 in April. So doing this 10 to 12 times a month for an hour and being able to be, have $2,000 be my the lowest I made in a month, that's pretty happy with that. So Roku catching some volume here. 
two minutes left, but price really isn't going anywhere. So that's no bueno. Amazon kind of struggled yesterday too. Trying to push through highs of day. What's futures doing? Kind of sitting there. So not really seeing anything after this third volume bar. Roku flipped red. I did have two nice winners yesterday in the zero GTE iron condors. Had a morning iron condor and a lunchtime iron condor that really nice winners. I have to about noon today. I've got to leave for a family Christmas in Lincoln, Nebraska. So we'll be able to trade any noon or power hours. Today, sometimes these, sometimes these days where the market just uh, chops and there's not much trading, that's pretty good if you're looking for a price to stay within a certain range. So still no mighty 90s. Volume looking pretty low. <laughs> Tell my 15 year old to keep it down in the background. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see what 2024 holds for the cryptos. Seems the last couple of months they've kind of made a little bit of a rebound after just really, you know, the crypto crash. Um, hard to tell what 2024 will bring, but be something to keep an eye on. Well, you can kind of see Microsoft, Netflix, NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon, just really light volume. So... Nothing. Yeah, and it's. I did hear something about the ETF. I uh, the ETF Riot blockchain. I've got that on here. I think. Used to trade it. Yeah, Riot. It's sitting at. Uh, 
almost $18. I bought a lot of shares when it was down to 4 and $5. I've just been holding them. So I've got a good return on that from this year. BTO, is that the ticker symbol? I do, I do, I do. Why did I not hold those calls I had? Man, it would have been... Um, ugh. I bailed on them down here. Look at that. It's gained about five points in the last two days. Uh, that's a new crypto ETF, I guess, from BlackRock is what uh, I just heard about a new ETF. I don't know, my, I don't know much about it. <clears throat> so still just nothing. Look at this. Netflix, look how look how tight this range is in Netflix, and it's a four hundred and ninety dollars stock. Gotcha. Thanks. Opt four. Uh, NTT trades. Let's see. I did close out. Yes, I did. And I think it reminds me I didn't post the, I didn't post my outs. In the NTT channel, I might. I think I forgot about doing that. Yes, I closed everything yesterday. Except I do. I closed the day before. I remember to do that man when you're leading a live stream and you're making video reviews and sometimes it's hard to remember to do everything uh posting zero dte trades darn it So again, just nothing really. Microsoft pushing highs of day. Try to be better. I was just real busy yes, uh, yesterday when I closed a couple of those out. So I'll look for some continuation runners here. Because I'm not seeing any volume runners or mighty 90s. I mean, potentially Netflix here, but the I look at I look at Netflix and toss. It just seems it's just a very tight range. So Yeah. I mean, it would qualify as a mighty 90. It's just that the range is so tight. Maybe if it comes down to yesterday's low here, I'll go in, but I probably would go in small. See, I came down to yesterday's low and bounced. So let me try that. And trading the seven DTEs today, seven DTEs. So just going to do a 
smaller than normal here. 490 calls in Netflix. Built at 635. So, looking for it to bounce here. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should have waited. This bar may get bigger than the first. It could be a, I just noticed that could be a downside volume runner. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't get into Netflix if you haven't right now. Because it looks like that bar is going to get bigger than the first. So I'm going to close my Netflix here. Filled at 6.35. So I closed it for when I opened it. And this will bounce up. So well, I'm not even going to really, I'm not even going to count that one as, because after I placed the trade, I then realized that this bar was started growing real rapidly. So I won't even count that one there because it's a scratch trade. Mighty 90 short in Microsoft here now. Take a look at that. Microsoft, I would trade the 375 puts. Build it 240. So 375 puts. Nice looking mighty 90 here. Let's hopefully it looks like that in toss. Yep. Distinct volume pop. And then it pushed right back up to the top here. And that's where I got in. <laughs> so definitely a, a good setup in terms of volume and where price is. I would close half at 265. And uh, I will add to it if it pushes again. Yeah, a lot of stocks chopping. Square Boeing. When you don't get, when price doesn't move very much, it's hard to make profits.
which not really hasn't done anything. Netflix, maybe I should have entered the downside volume runner. It looks like it's going to get another big red bar. I guess I could have turned around and bought some puts, but Tesla not moving very far, Meta not moving very far. See, it looks like Microsoft has come down quite a bit, but because this range is so tight. Morning Iron Condor it's looking good, it's sitting at center still. <clears throat> Amazon kind of looking like it wants to continue upward. So one red bar out of Microsoft. Netflix with another big red bar. Again, I've got a Microsoft order in at 265. 10% of 240 is 24 cents. So if you're new, that's how I kind of scale out, scale out half at 240 plus 24, just call it 265. So far, so good on Microsoft. If it'll bounce off yesterday's high here, it's going to have to push through it to fill film, film me it for half. We look at Amazon getting a big green bar. Let me check that and tell us. Uh, toss it is not big green bar. <laughs> so. It is a small bar and toss. So I'm going to ignore this Amazon. Tesla coming down to lows of day. Amazon going through highs, trying to get through highs of day. Microsoft, I may have to just, um, it's got three minutes left here. Hopefully it finishes weak. Again, not many opportunities here in terms of volume. Pushing through highs. So here's a good example of you think I would have gotten out of half by now because I got in up here at Microsoft and it came all the way down to yesterday's low. 
I'm sorry, yesterday's high, this blue line. But I haven't gotten filled on half. So that's um goes to show you if it's got a tight range, even though it's got a good signal here, it's hard to make profits. Now it flips green. There are stocks coming down to lows of day. Tesla, Meta, Amazon's pushed through lows of day. Roku's coming down. Indices are pretty flat. Baba falling. Well, I suppose I'll close my Microsoft out. It kind of looks like it wants to go higher because it's not really resisting. Like, like it's really, it's, it's really resisting this yesterday's high. Like it wants to continue higher. So it looks like it's going you know, to, is it going to give us another red bar or not? I'm going to go ahead and close it out here. It's just gave me a second red bar. Filled at 249. So got in at 240 and filled at 249 after two red bars. Honestly, it looks like it wants to continue higher here. Push up, a little pause. I mean, if it comes back down to the blue line here, this stays high. Might not be a bad time to try to get some continued upward movement. Yeah, exactly. It's just like at this at, at this point where we're at in the trading day and year, it's might as well just take your small profit. I was looking at Tesla down here. I mean. It's not a great mighty 90 setup, but it was it came down to lows of day. So yeah, look at Microsoft pop up. I knew it. S P actually pushed through highs of day. Take a look at futures. Yeah. Kind of pushed through this little consolidation. Um, yeah, Tesla, I was, I was thinking about a mighty 90 and Tesla would have been awesome, right? When it came down and touched, and here's a good example of a key level, right? Okay. So one time it came down to the lows of day, popped up, came back down to lows of day, gave a little bit of a mighty 90 signal and popped right back up. And I just got filled on something. Got filled on half of my iron condor already. Wow. So closed half at 20% profit. Yep. 100% correct. Fast. Yeah, must have. Must have had a little IV crush there. Amazon, I thought it wanted to go higher too. Look at it pushing up. Trying to get back some of what it lost yesterday.
tight on Microsoft. Man. That'd been that'd have been a good one. So I need to get a order in here. For my iron condor just so it has a stop on it in case this just freaks out and blasts upward. NASDAQ pushing up. Meta getting a bar almost as big as the first here. And we only got 15 seconds left, so. Netflix getting maybe a potential big green bar. Square did have a little mighty 90 there. Again, it's a really tight range, but. Microsoft couldn't get through highs. All right, blockchain is bleeding lower. Things coming down now. Futures pushed all the way back down. Russell bleeding lower. Square may get a bar as big as the first. Square's kind of been on a tear lately. If you look at a daily chart, look at this. And it came up to where highs were back in July. So I wonder if it's going to start rolling over here.
I think I'll stay away from square. Again, really tight range. Again, just not not seeing anything that's really worth trading. Delta neutral, I guess, is the way to go today. Wow, riot. Really falling here. Big bar. So is Coinbase. That's interesting. Hey, Snapchat pushed up. There's nothing but red since. Yeah, Square does have a volume runner. Let me check toss. It does look like it, though. We'll have to see if it bounces at all. Yeah, definitely a big volume bar. Square, I would trade the 79 puts. Build it a buck 71. This volume runner. You probably could get a better fill than me. Right, blockchain volume runner to the downside as well. It's getting a little bit of a bounce right now. It might be a day where you just see some push downs, push ups, push downs, push ups. I've uh, I got in square because like I showed you earlier on that daily chart how strong it's been and I'm guessing maybe uh, investors in square maybe might start selling off today as it gets up here to you can kind of see if you look at a big picture going back to 2022 it hit a certain point dropped hit a certain point dropped hit a certain point dropped and it's back up to that certain point nowhere near all-time highs though netflix did push below that pivot dk and g just kind of bleeding lower
Microsoft never able to break through that highs of day. Square trying to push up here. Although it's not going very far. Yeah, it's just like I said, it's hard. I mean, it looks like this is a pretty decent push. But it's only like three or four cents from where I entered because it's such tight range. Again, that's why it's just hard to make money when your price movement is in such a tight range. So if it goes above right here, that price point where that big bar was started, then I will just bail on it. That's the failure of a volume runner is when it pushes, in this case, a downside volume runner pushes above where the price started, the big volume bar. Look at AMD, MU, Disney. Yeah, so I need I, I need Square to push through lows of day here now. Let's see, I will I will close half of my square at a dollar eighty eight. Future's coming down. And a boy square. Now just keep pushing. <laughs> Right on one percent. It's actually one of the weaker stocks on, on my board. That's it, Square. Keep coming. Come on. A couple more ticks to fill me. Right, and Coinbase continuing to fall. Look at that. Another big volume bar in Coinbase. 
Let me get out of half my square here. Come on. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. It's a dollar eighty six. I got an order in a dollar eighty eight. Adjust it to get filled here. See what it does in this last minute. It's 45 seconds left. Looks like it's going to finish wheat. Come on. Costco through lows of day. Man, minute movement here, huh? Filled at a dollar eighty seven. So I adjusted it a penny. Looks like I would have gotten filled if I wouldn't have, but still. Not want a bounce to happen. Well, don't think I'm going to get in anything else. Um, Okay, so for square, um, I probably would get out of another contract at about every 15 cents. So like two bucks would be the next one I would get out of if it continues lower. If it pushes up and gets back above this bar right here, then I would just close it out. Otherwise, I'll just ride it lower. So, so I would close if it gets above $79, I guess that would be. So my hope is maybe, you know, if it's going to produce a green bar here that it rolls over again and just starts to bleed lower like some of these others. Man, why are you pushing up? It's killing me. Um, JPM strong. I don't really I really don't want it to get back above a dollar seventy one where I got in. So if it gets like up to about a buck seventy, I'll probably just close it. That way I can ensure that I have a, a small profit. So it's currently about a dollar eighty one, eighty two right in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm not going to get any more trades here. So I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, thank you for an awesome, awesome 2023. We could not do this here if it wasn't for you guys. So very thankful for all of you who choose to be a part of our community. So I will catch you guys on Tuesday. That's January 2nd. The next time the market is open. So we'll see you then. Have a great New Year's. Peace.